Hi guys, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be solving the day three exercise for 30 days of Python. If you haven't been following the 30 days of Python series, let me just tell you quickly about it. We are posting one new blog post a day for 30 days. We started in April 1st and we're covering a lot of the Python fundamentals and giving you exercises and projects to solve. If you aren't part of the series yet, if you haven't been following it, you can click the link down in the description below this video to start that. And if you have and you have successfully completed uh, the day three project, then we're going to show you how we would solve it here so you can compare and maybe learn a thing or two. If you're stuck and you need help, remember to join our Discord server where we can help you out, or you can compare your code with the project solution that we're giving you now and see if you can continue from more or less where you start to understand what's going on. All right, so for this project, we need to take in the employee name, hours worked and hourly wage. We need to process them and eventually we need to tell the user how much money the employee earned this week. So we're gonna need to print out a string like this employee name earned hours worked times hourly wage this week. So we're going to start off by collecting the data from the user. We're going to use the input function to do that. So first of all, we have the employee name. So we're going to do input and then please enter the employee's name. A couple of things here to remember. There's a colon at the end and a space so that the user can start typing nicely without having to enter their own space after the colon. And we're going to get a string back from the input function that we're going to assign to the name variable when the user presses enter. Then we've got the hourly wage and that's going to be another input which is asking what is their hourly wage. And finally we have the hours worked which is another input of how many hours have they worked this week. Notice how I mistakenly typed a capital W here for hours worked. This is a very common mistake. Just make sure you keep reading back over your code to spot these small errors. Change that to lowercase, otherwise later on when you try to use the variable, maybe you'll type it differently and you'll get confused. As we explained in the series, always use lowercase letters for your variables, at least for now. Notice how here REPL8 has gone into two lines. That's totally fine. The line numbers here on the left tell me that this is all one line, line 10. So this is all going to work. It's not like I've created a new line there. Now we can test whether this is all working by printing the variables we've created out. Ideally, what should happen is the program will ask us to enter the employee's name, then the hourly wage, and then how many hours they've worked, and we will enter values for each, pressing enter in between. And then we can print these variables out and we should get the same value that we entered. So that's why we're going to print these things here. And I'd recommend you get accustomed to printing things out as you go along, especially at the early stages of your learning, to verify in your head what data things contain. And that way you'll really build an understanding and you won't be assuming things as you go along. Sometimes it can be confusing when you do that and things don't match what you expect, but that's part of the fun of it, I guess. Uh, so we're going to type Regina George here. The hourly wage is going to be 25 and if worked um, five hours this week. So we get the name 25 and five exactly as we would expect. Now, something that we might want to do is to process the employee name so that if the user types something that doesn't really look like a person's name, at least in a Western fashion, we may want to change that so that it does. Uh, for example, if they type uh, Regina uh, George like that, for example, if they had their caps lock pressed by accident and they press enter and then they type 25 and 5, we want to process this string so that the name goes to the correct uh, format. Uh, so how we can do that is we can do something like name.title. And we learned about this earlier on in the series. When you do dot .title, Python is going to take each word in the string and it's going to make it all lowercase except for the first letter, which is going to turn to uppercase. So essentially the opposite of what we've got going on here. Let's run that again and we will try that. Now you can see that what we're printing out is correct. 
Remember that name was an expression that evaluated to the value that was assigned to the variable when we ran this function and when we ran this assignment. But name.title is also an expression that evaluates to the result of converting the string into this new format and that is then what gets printed out. So this expression evaluates first and then Python prints it out. This is just working as we would expect normally with other uh, expressions. Now remember that you can do things like uh, title name and make it equal to name.title and then you could work with title name uh, from here onwards and that would be fine. If you do this, this would mean you've got two variables now name in its original format, this incorrect format, and title name in its new format, this format. That's totally fine, but usually we prefer to do something like this, especially when you don't need to reuse the old format name anywhere else. Essentially, if you only want the new format, it doesn't make sense to keep the old format hanging about in a different variable for no reason. Something else that users might do uh, when typing input into our uh, prompts is they might type too many spaces by accident. They might type a space at the beginning, for example, or at the end, and we usually we want to get rid of them. And so what we would recommend is that you apply the strip function uh, so that you do name.strip like that. This is going to get rid of any spaces at the start and at the end of the string so that it ends up only as the characters. Notice how here we're applying the strip uh, function to name and then we're applying the title function. This here is an expression which evaluates to the action that strip does which is removing the spaces and it gives you this new string which is the name without the spaces. If you put dot title at the end you've got now two sets of expressions. This one here, well, first of all, you've got name as an expression, which is the value originally entered. Then you've got another expression, which is the result of stripping the spaces at the start and at the end. And on this, when it evaluates, we apply this third expression, which gives us the name without the spaces converted into title case format with the new capital letters. So you can chain these things like that, the dot just means that this thing here applies onto this thing here. So the strip applies onto name, title applies onto the result of that. Now, instead of doing all of this, you could just as well put it directly in the input function like that. I'm going to just move this a bit so that it goes into one line. You've got the input function, which is your expression that evaluates to what the user typed. Then we're stripping that. And finally, we are titling that. Uh, so this does everything in one line. You can do that if you prefer, and then you don't need these things here, or you can do them in separate variables. It's up to you. In the blog post that's associated with this video, where we also go through the project, we've got all this laid out in a nice way, so you can go through and read that and look at your different options there. Now that we've got the employee name successfully formatted, we are going to start working on the wages. The first thing we may try to do to calculate the earnings is to do something like hourly wage times hours worked. However, if you run this, and I'm just going to bring this back a little bit so we can see, and we type something like Jose and then 25 and 5, we get back an error that says can't multiply sequence by non-integer of type string. This error, although a bit cryptic, tells us that we're trying to multiply a sequence, which is a string, by something that is also a string. And so you can't do that. You can't multiply a string by a string. It's not allowed. You then might be tempted to convert one of these into an integer, for example, like that. And now if you do that, as we've seen earlier on, and you type your numbers here, um, well, you'll see that it works, but nothing gets printed out. You do have to print in order to get some output, of course you get 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. What's happened here is that we've multiplied a string, a literal collection of characters by a number. And what that's given us is the string added to itself five times. So something like this, essentially, plus hourly wage and so on. Right. And when we add strings together, that is going to concatenate them, as we've seen earlier on in day two, and when you concatenate them, they end up joined together, 
and that's what we've got here. And so what we want to do is turn both into numbers. So we'll do multiplied by float of hours worked and float of hours of hourly wage. Now, the reason why I'm turning these into floats here instead of int, as we did earlier on, is because they might have partial uh, hours or maybe they earn uh, an amount with cents or pence. And so that's why I'm using float here, but there's no other reason for it. Now that we've got that, we can run it and see if it works. And you can see that we get 125.0, which is what we would expect. The next step is to print this out in a nice format like this one. And for that, we're going to use F strings. Notice that our program has done two major things at this stage. Our program has collected data and it has processed data. Now, the final step on any program is to output or display the data. All programs have those three steps in them. It's just a matter of whether you see them and how long they are. In this case, we've got some of our user input sort of mixed with some processing. That's totally fine. But there are three stages in here. So now we're reaching the final stage, which is displaying the data. And we're going to put things into an F string. Remember, an F string has the F, then the quotation marks. And inside it, we can put letters and characters and symbols like any string. But we can also use curly braces to embed variables or interpolate variables. So we can do name earned and then the dollar sign which is just a dollar sign as you could see in a string earnings this week and what that's going to do is it's going to interpolate into here the name of the employee earned then it's going to interpolate the earnings of the employee with the dollar sign in front and then this week and then a full stop now if we run this you'll see that I earned $125 this week. This is exactly what the exercise was asking for. So congratulations. If you got this far and you understood everything that's been going on, that's awesome. Good work. You're ready to move on to day four. Um, but there was also some bonus material that we wanted to cover. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how to display floating point numbers uh, more concisely, then stay for a second and we will show you how. Let's say that we run this code and we type Jose and then 17.65 and 9.5 hours. You'll see that we earned $167.674999998. Not the greatest way of displaying anything uh, when you've got this many decimal points, but also it doesn't make sense for currency to have this many decimal points anyway. So we want to limit this output of this number here to only ever be displayed with two decimal places. And so how we can do that is by using some special formatting syntax inside this F string. The other option is to convert the earnings into an integer, which just drops everything after the decimal place, kind of like this. Um, but again, we don't want to do that because then we would be underpaying our employees. So to use this special formatting syntax, we are going to type the colon after the earnings variable, but still inside the curly braces. And then we're going to type 0.2 F. And what this means is after the decimal place, we only want two characters. And the value here is a float. That's what the F means. So colon 0.2 F is going to tell Python that we want to format this float to only two numbers after the decimal point. We have a couple of blog posts that cover this in detail, so we're going to link them below in the description of this video in case you're interested. They are a little bit more advanced, so maybe you can have a quick read through them, see what you think, and maybe bookmark them to come back to later on once you've learned more about Python. Running this now with the same values, we get 167.67. So this is slightly better, but again, this was just an extra that you didn't have to do for your project, but it does improve the outcome of the project a little bit. 
Thank you for joining me in this video. I hope you have learned something. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for joining us for the three days of the 30 Days of Python series. Hopefully, you will continue to join us for the next 27 days. I know that seems very long, but trust me, they're going to go by very quickly. So thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow in the blog.